get excited because we've been granted behind the scenes access here at Sketchyland. No, we are not seeing the ride controls or the character actor locker room. Even better. We're in the storage pantry. Pretty great, right? Right? Right. And with that, on to the storage lipids. We'll cover how storage lipids behave as fuel storage in the body, and how they behave as molecules when we mix them with other things in the lab. As their name implies, storage lipids, otherwise known as triglycerides, function as long-term energy storage. This is a direct contrast to the relatively short-term energy storage of carbohydrates. Actually, the oxidation of triglycerides yields twice as much energy per gram as carbohydrates. Why? Well, the carbon atoms of triglycerides are more reduced than those of carbohydrates, meaning they have more electron density per carbon on average. So when they get oxidized and eventually give those electrons to oxygen atoms, triglycerides have more to give than carbohydrates, so there's more energy to be released by letting those electrons go. In addition to energy storage, triglycerides serve another important purpose, insulation. So feel free to start thinking of love handles as little concentrated side sweaters. Or I guess this literal insulation works too, but that's not as fun. We've already mentioned triglycerides exactly four times. So, like, what are they? Triglycerides, or triacylglycerols if you fancy, are composed of three fatty acids bonded by ester linkages to glycerol. These zigzaggy knives should remind you of fatty acids, and three of them are hanging below a box of glycerol glacier gum. In animals, triglycerides are stored in cells called adipocytes, which are found in adipose tissue, colloquially referred to as fat. You can think of this jar as adipose tissue and the cheese poof balls inside as the adipocytes that comprise it. Adipocytes are found primarily under the skin, in breast tissue, and packed around internal organs. In the body, triglyceride catabolism is catalyzed by lipases. Yep. In order to utilize the energy stored in the fatty acid tails of triglycerides, the ester bonds between the glycerol and the fatty acid tails must be broken. The deesterification of triglycerides generates glycerol and free fatty acids. That is, fatty acids with a free carboxyl group. Hence the free fatty acid knives in this cardboard box. You know, for carboxyl. Free fatty acids non-covalently bind to the protein serum albumin in the bloodstream then are transported to tissues in need of those sweet, sweet reduced carbons. Scientists and soap makers can also break the ester bonds of triglycerides with a process called saponification. So while triglyceride catabolism by lipases takes place inside the body, saponification occurs outside. That is, as long as you're not a corpse. Which you're not, so you'll need some water and a really strong base like sodium or potassium hydroxide to make saponification happen. You can remember ester hydrolysis of triglycerides with ester's wet apron next to some basic cleaner. All right, let's see what else is in here. Another pack of glycerol gum, seen it, zigzaggy knife, ooh, salt, that's new. The saponification of triglycerides results in glycerol and amphipathic fatty acid salts. Wait, fatty acid salts? Boom, we just made soap. Uh, not real soap, theoretical soap doesn't quite have the same lather. Anyway, soaps can act as surfactants, lowering the surface tension of whatever liquid or liquids it's in. This is important to how soaps function. If you tried to dissolve something nonpolar, say oil, in a polar solvent like water, you can shake it all you want, but the two phases will eventually separate. If you add soap into the mix, oil and water combine, forming a colloid. This occurs because the hydrophilic heads of the fatty acid salts turn outward to interact with the aqueous solution they're in, and the hydrophobic tails are sequestered internally as a result. Kinda like how the handles or polar heads of these knives are on the exterior of this fatty cheese, while the nonpolar zigzaggy stabby parts are on the interior. The structures that form from this process are called micelles, and they allow for the solvation of hydrophobic substances inside of them. For example, certain pharmaceutical drugs. And just a heads up, my cells form in the body too, just not with soap molecules. Hopefully. You'll hear more about biological micelles in the context of lipid absorption and digestion. You know, come to think of it, this place has way too many loose knives for a tour group. Let's sum this thing up and get out of here. 
Storage lipids function as long-term energy storage because their carbon atoms have a greater number of electrons around them than those in short-term energy molecules like carbohydrates. In other words, they're more reduced. Storage lipids also provide insulation, trapping in heat and keeping you toasty all year round. Triglycerides are composed of three fatty acids bonded to glycerol by ester linkages. In animals, triglycerides are stored in adipocytes, the cells that predominantly comprise adipose tissue. In the body, triglyceride catabolism is catalyzed by lipases, a process that generates glycerol and free fatty acids. Outside the body, ester hydrolysis of triglycerides occurs in saponification, a chemical process that requires water and a strong base. The saponification of triglycerides results in glycerol and amphipathic fatty acid salts. Salts of fatty acids are known as soaps. In water, fatty acid salt molecules form micelles, structures that allow for the solvation of hydrophobic substances inside of them. All right, well, I'm out of here. This video has made me want to do like six trillion crunches. One, two, three. <sighs> okay. Good enough.